Sand Hills, and uh, we are a teeny tiny nonprofit here in the Sand Hills region. We try to serve um, the eight counties um, that are around Fort Bragg, um, and our mission is <laughs> green school, um, sorry, clean up water, clean air, green schools, and green business. This morning I'm here to talk about our green business program, and I like to use um, the website. Is this squirrel? Okay. So. We started doing green business back in 2009, and green business is our certification program where we actually go into your business and we help you with processes that are sustainable. We look at everything from your company culture, how you and your employees get along, um, how you are able to instill in your employees the importance of green practices. This could be, uh, you could own a manufacturing facility, or you could be in charge of a fully freelance workforce who's not necessarily on your payroll. So don't, um, don't get bogged down in company culture. It could just be you and an assistant um, or yourself and how you decide to conduct your business as a small business owner. Um, but one of the things that we do in the green, in addition to company culture, we, start, we also look at your purchasing. We look at your um, energy use, water use. We also take some time to educate you on some of the finer points of sustainability. Um, whenever I come into your business, an initial certification takes about two hours. It's a two-hour interview, just me and you, and all the things that you would like your business to be doing that's greener. Um, and this could be for a couple of reasons, the reason that you want to do this. First and foremost, you want to be a steward of the environment. It also helps your bottom line whenever you're saving water and you're saving electricity. And we have ways of showing you how to do that, whether it is making a major capital investment or doing something as simple as you had a leaky faucet for the last six months. We need to fix that. Um, so one of the things that the Green Business Program does is that we also like to reach out to the community and build value into the program. I don't just come into your business, audit you, give you a sticker, and leave. I am your one phone call away. I'm the person that you can call going, hey, I cannot find recycled toilet paper anywhere in Fayetteville. Where is it? I'm looking for all paper cups. I, don't, I want compostable cups. Where can I purchase them? We have a database for that. I will do the research for you. I got a phone call six months after I did someone's green business certification. They were looking for somewhere to recycle batteries that wasn't with the landfill. I, 15 minutes later, I had somebody for them. All they had to do was call me. So. Once you walk away with a certification, that's not the end of it. It continues to grow. Also, if you're a new certification, we certify at 80%. So on our check, we have each, like an eight-page checklist with more than 300 different items on it. Don't let that scare you. <laughs> um, those, um, those items are all flexible. You don't have to do every single one of them. You only have to do a portion of them. But as a new cert, whenever you get to 80% of what you've committed to doing, you're certified. You have the next year to bring yourself up to 100% commitment. All following certifications are every 24 months. And sometimes I do drop by those new businesses and go, hey, so how are you doing on that? You said that you wanted to get a solar hot water heater. Have you done that yet? Are you, what's the hold up? Do you need me to help you? you know, um, move forward with those next steps and that kind of thing. So the other thing that I've done is that I've created the Green Business Directory because people like to know who the green businesses are. These are all of our currently certified green businesses in Fayetteville and the surrounding area. We have about 30, this is not scrolling, what am I doing wrong? We have about 30 actual businesses and then we also do, it's not working. We also do uh, municipalities as well. Um, we use our green business program to train um, students from our local universities in sustainability and one of the things they do um, is that they go and work with the municipalities. Um, the Cumberland County did it last year. We're looking at perhaps doing the town of Spring Lake this year or this fall. So they're also listed on this and what that means is that students I have basically run, given them all the training they need to do to go in and do a green business audit. They interface with the leadership in that particular department within the municipality. They give them their action plan and they do the certification. What I do is I go behind them and make sure that it's perfectly fine. And what, what ended up happening this past year is that we actually had a couple of students come back to us and go, hey, my employer is interested in green business. 
you know, they want to learn more because they had already had this experience. So for us, it's a way to not only train another core of um, students and perhaps maybe they want to come back later and work for Sustainable Sand Hills or they, they have experience in um, a checklist environment. There are a lot of environmental programs throughout the United States are checklist based. They may be able to take those skills and apply them in the real working world. In addition to that, it helps us out at Sustainable Sand Hills in growing the green business program because you train somebody and they come back to you and tell you that they, um, their employer wants in, I'm all for that. So, um, one of the things that is going to change with green business this year, however, every business that's been, um, <coughs> every business that has been uh, certified with us in the last 18 months, since January of last year through June of this year, um, we are starting something a little bit different. We did two things to the program that was not done from 2009 until I took the program over. First of all is platinum certification. If you are a green business that's been with us through three recertification cycles, you are now qualified for the platinum program. We have green businesses in, in the Sand Hills right now that they take that 300 or more um, criteria and they, they want to complete as much of it as they can, not just the minimums in each category. Um, we had one of our green businesses make a million dollar capital investment to switch over to LED lights. In four years, they're gonna get every dime of that money back in electrical savings. Four years. That's, that's how powerful switching to energy efficient lighting is right now. But we want to give those businesses that have been in the green business program and have been moving forward and trying to add to their bottom line um, we want to give them extra recognition, so we started the Platinum program. Our first Platinum business was Partnership for Children here in town. Um, hopefully by the end of the year, they will, um, they will also have an all-hybrid fleet, which is pretty impressive. They thought about going electric, but they haven't, they haven't really figured out how to do the infrastructure there for car charging just yet. And um, knowing them, they probably will. Um, but the point is, is that, you know, some of our green businesses are like, well, we've been recertifying with the same thing year after year after year. So this right here was another way to kind of help people do more. The other thing that we're going to be doing, and it's not on here, is the Green Business Gala. Um, in June of this year, all of our certified green businesses will be invited to a nice party out where we eat some really great food. And if you've not ever been to one of our pop-ups, you've missed out. More pop-ups are coming, but we are going to be doing an exclusive one, basically, for our green businesses um, and their leadership and their employees to come in. We're going to recognize people on the different things that they have chosen to focus on in their business, be it energy-efficient lighting, switching over you know, to rainwater catchment, um, or just, in general, educating. I've got a green business right now <coughs> who her entire workforce is freelance. And she sat down with all of them and ta taught them about how to route, um, how to do proper um, delivery routes, and how to time um, different appointments and things throughout the day for maximum fuel efficiency. Um, handed them a huge stack of information on recycling in their own home. She got very personal with them. And for her and her green business model, that works. It does not work for everyone. Because obviously, if you've got 1,500 employees, you're mostly looking at company culture on just trying to get somebody to put a plastic bottle in a trash can. So, um, yeah. and sometimes it's like that. And we do that. I, oh, we do that. I sat down in, um, in a large manufacturing plant in Sanford, and just the order of the trash cans was an issue. Because trash was number one. And trash was easiest to get to. And I'm not going to lie to you, even I sometimes, you know, if I've got to lean over something or I've got to move something out of the way or, God forbid, is a hole this big around and it's full of trash already that's not even recyclable, that, trash can, that bottle is going in the trash. So we look at stuff like that whenever we're in a business. Um, and we look at what can and cannot be done for your business. But um, back to the Screen Business Gala. Um, if you do certify before June of this year, you would be invited to that event. Um, it, like I said, it is an exclusive event. Um, and it's a way to also network. That's the next thing, is that in addition to me doing this directory, every quarter we do in green business networking events here in Fayetteville and in Moore County. 
Um, so if you're not a green business yet, it is an opportunity to come out and meet uh, business leaders who are green business certified, who have already gone through the process, who've already taught what, who've already learned um, and know what works for them. It's a great time to ask questions. I'm there. It's a little less of a formal event, you know. It's, you know, we're sitting back having a beer and talking about what does and does not work um, in the round of sustainability. Um, the other thing is that you do not have to have a green product to be a green business. Little secret, at one time, Piedmont Natural Gas was a green business with us. Most people don't think of natural gas as a green thing. So, but they were. They're no longer a green business of ours, despite me calling them back. But their processes internally were very great. Impeccable recycling program. They switched over to CFLs before it was cool, you know, um, and that kind of thing does deserve recognition. So don't think that if you don't, that if you know, don't think that you have to have a green product to um, become a green business. That's not what this is about. This is about environmental stewardship within your actual business processes. So do I have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, do you charge to come in and do an audit for a business and also do you uh, do that with churches as well? So I will answer that in two parts. Yes, there is a charge for green businesses. Um, it ranges anywhere from 200 to 15 to, I'm sorry, seven, eighteen hundred dollars $1,800, depending on the number of employees in your business and whether or not you are a member of the chamber. Chamber members get that lower rate, so there's two different rates. Um, if you're not a member, for example, since most of you guys are small business owners, it's 200 for chamber members, 250 for non-chamber members. Um, for churches, we do have a green church certification. Um, we have tried numerous times since 2012 to actually move that forward. We haven't figured out a great model for doing so. We, um, we found that there are certain churches who are very, very, um, they, they want to do it but we haven't figured out a model for not charging for it yet. Um, and maybe you guys can help with that. That was, um, that's one of the sticking points that we've had because it does take time to do these, especially the, um, that initial, like I said, it's two hours in the office or in the business, plus I have to go back. So there's multiple visits. Um, there's an amount of research. Usually for your average small business, uh, you know, the average $200 certification chamber member takes me about five to six hours to complete. So we haven't figured out how to do that with churches yet because obviously you have, there's a lot of training and talks that have to go into communicating with congregations and things like that. So if you've got any advice on how to, you know, beef that up a little bit, I'm here. <laughs> and so is there a charge every year to recertify as well? Yes, every two okay. years. Every two years? Yes, okay. the initial, actually, sorry. The first year, the first certification is 12 months, and then I recertify you. That one's charged, and then every two years after that. And what's the charge for that? Is it the it's same? It's the same, okay. because it takes sometimes the same amount of time. And some businesses, believe it or not, whenever, one of the reasons why, I love, why I've actually enjoyed recertifications more than initials is because there's been this issue of change management. A lot of times, people leave. And they're like, oh yeah, we did green business, and I'm glad you called us, and we've not, we, we don't do recycling anymore, <laughs> you know? And that's why we recertify, because something may have happened during that two years mm -hmm. that um, you gotta retake a look at and see if things are working for you or not, so. But there he is. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, but um, other questions? Did I, mm, got it? Any other questions? Concerns, curiosities. All right, so the next thing about us. Let's see, can I get there? So I am gonna make a shameless plug for our event this Saturday from 11 a.m. to 4, 5 p.m. We are gonna be meeting at New Century International Elementary School with people from all across the state to discuss the state of renewable and clean energy in the Sand Hills region. I do realize that there is a there is discussions at the national level and there are discussions at the state level. We are going to be focusing on what is happening right here in our particular region. Um, we have people coming in from from all different sectors of renewable energy, including um, biodiesel, um, <coughs> chicken litter waste recycling. <laughs> Um, where they actually take chicken litter and they digest it down and turn it into natural gas. Um, 
We also are going to have all of our, we've got three major universities coming out and talking um, about their renewable energy and sustainable energy curriculum. We also have Cumberland County Schools coming out. Um, PwC, Duke Energy, and the Utilities Commission will also be on hand for their panel. So if you want to pick their brains as to why we don't have more renewable energy, it's a good time to ask. Um, shh, don't, don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> they probably like that very much. Um, in addition to that, we are going to have children's events. Oops. Um, and a tiny house? Yes, we're going to have a tiny house. We're going to have a tiny house. Oh, yeah. Teeny tiny house. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, somewhere <laughs> down here, way down here. I don't remember it taking this long to scroll before. But we do have children's events that, okay, there's a certain level of finesse that, okay, here they are. Children's events. We are having children's events that are hosted by Cumberland County Schools, I'm sorry, Cumberland County Public Libraries. Um, Doug Bird Clean Tech Academy. Um, however, if you have children between the ages of 8 and 12, they must register for the event ahead of time in order to participate. Um, Bricks for Kids is also going to be there for the kidlets. So definitely if you've got some kids that are interested at all or you just want something to, for them to do for the afternoon while you go sit in on some very, very um, engaging panels, definitely sign them up for this. Um, the other little unique thing that we have going on, if I could scroll down somewhere in here, eventually it'll flash up here that we're going to do a community visioning. Unlike a lot of these things that we go to that we just kind of leave at the end of the day and we're like, oh, that's nice. Not this time. At 4 o'clock, we are serving cupcakes from Sweet Palette. If you've never been to the Sweet Palette, you're missing out. Best cupcakes in town, unless y'all know another baker and y'all want to argue with you. <laughs> um, but, we are doing a community visioning um, where we are actually going to sit down after everybody has gone to all these panels and engaged in all these enlightening discussions. And we're going to talk about um, what is and is not going to work for our community with regard to renewable energy. Um, I think it's a very important thing to have because not everybody, you cannot attend all nine panels. You can only attend three at most. So, and to have everybody who has gained all of that insight and information in the same room there at the end of the day to discuss what will and will not work. Um, but please join us. Uh, I'm, yes, way back there in the back. I <laughs> heard that the Tiny House people and Butler Quality Pork and Bioenergy will be presenting a one million cup style presentation at 11 o'clock in the morning. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> At 11 o'clock, we are doing our business pitch. <laughs> yes, at 11 o'clock, um, we have invited in renewable um, business renewable energy business owners to come in and talk about um, their business model and how they have gotten started and some of the challenges that they have faced as business owners um, in the renewable energy business. And like I said, they both are very different. One of them is a bio farm. They actually are a pork producing farm that, and you'll learn all about it, but they're a pork producing farm that uses biogas. And then we're going to learn from um, Carolina's sustainable structures and how they do architecture for energy efficiency. So we've tried to cover it all. Tried. Tried. <laughs> but that's all I have. Yes, sir. Yes? Yes? No? Okay. Okay. I'm just... Yawning? Was it really that bad? <laughs> no, I just... My head is so filled, I'm, I'm about to put both hands here to hold the knowledge you have. <laughs> that's all it is. That's why my hands are here. Too much for the brain cells. Okay. <laughs> Didn't need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? So what can we do to help support you? Or what, what Become a member of Sustainable Sand Hills and join the green businesses. Those are the two things that you can do. And don't, don't be afraid to ask questions about what it is that Sustainable Sand Hills does. I know that some of you guys have um, you know, seen our presentations for some of the other programs that we do. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be a little confusing, I guess, because we do a lot. And we each focus on a different thing. But um, you know, feel free to ask us and, and also support us in some of our endeavors. That's it. Thank you.